We now come to the Leader of the SNP, Ian Blackford. Mr Speaker, and can I wish the Prime Minister and all those that are self-isolating well. Mr Speaker, over the past 20 years, Westminster has imposed an extreme Brexit, an illegal war in Iraq, £9,000 tuition fees, the Windrush scandal, the rape clause, the bedroom tax, and a decade of Tory austerity cuts which have pushed millions into poverty. At the same time, the Scottish Parliament has delivered free prescriptions, free tuition fees, free personal care, free bus travel, the baby box, the Scottish child payment, world-leading climate action, all of which makes Scotland a fairer and more equal place to live. Does the Prime Minister understand why the people in Scotland think it is him and his Parliament that are the real disaster? Prime Minister. Well, Mr Speaker, I, I respectfully refer the right honourable gentleman the answer I gave to the Leader of the Opposition. I, I may say that I do think that his policies of wanting to break up the Union uh, are a disaster, and I wish, he would, I wish he and his party would focus on the real priorities of the people of Scotland, on education, on health, on tackling crime, and, the, and, and housing and the issues that matter to all our people. That's what a devolved government should do. I was very proud to, to run a devolved administration, and that's what we focused on. We didn't endlessly go on about constitutional change and the breakup of the UK. In Blackford. My goodness, I'm not sure if the Prime Minister was listening because I just charted some of the achievements of the Scottish Government delivering on behalf of the people of Scotland. Mr Speaker, no apology and no regrets from this Prime Minister. His attack on devolution wasn't just a slip of a tongue. It was a slip of the Tory mask. The chasm between Westminster and the Scottish people has never been bigger. We know that these were not just flippant remarks. When Scotland faces the biggest threat to devolution, with the Tory power grab bill. Here, here. The fact is, Scotland has been completely ignored by Westminster. We now face an extreme Brexit, a power grab, and another round of Tory cuts, all being imposed against our will for a, by a Tory government that we didn't vote for. Exactly. Isn't it the case, Mr Speaker, that the real disaster facing the people of Scotland is another 20 years of Westminster government? Isn't it clearer than ever that the only way, the only way, Mr Speaker, to protect Scotland's interests, our Parliament and our place in Europe, is for Scotland to become an independent country. Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, no, I, I, I could not disagree uh, with the Honourable Gentleman more. He is totally, he is totally wrong. Uh, and uh, what the UK does as a whole is far, far bigger, better and more important than what we can do uh, as, as, as individual nations and regions. And uh, I think that actually when you look at the way the UK has pulled together during this pandemic, the way the armed services have worked uh, to get testing throughout the whole of the UK, the way that uh, the furlough scheme has been deployed across the UK, the, the billions and billions that have been found to help people uh, across the whole of the UK, businesses in Scotland, in Wales, in Northern Ireland, in England, I think that the UK has shown its value and will continue to show its value, Mr Speaker. And when he talks about wanting to take uh, Scotland back into the, into the European Union, which I think seemed to be what he was uh, saying just now, uh, what he should understand, what the people of Scotland should understand, is that is a massive surrender of power by the people of Scotland straight back to Brussels, just as this country, just as the people of, of Scotland have taken it back again. And power not just over uh, many aspects of, uh, of their lives and their regulations, but of course, power to control Scottish fisheries as well. And all that uh, would be lost uh, under his programme. And uh, I may say, I do not believe it will commend itself to the Scottish people. It was a programme that was decisively rejected in 2014. I believe uh, that uh, it is uh, something that it, they would almost certainly reject again, Mr Speaker. But as uh, he said uh, before, uh, or as certainly as his party said before, 